Do you want to work in the healthcare industry, impact thousands of lives, work with your hands, have the opportunity to grow your own business, alleviate pain and suffering, and give people a new smile? I think you wanna be a dentist, and that's why you're at this video. Today, I'm gonna to talk you through the entire process of getting to that goal. Hello everyone, my name is Steven. I am a first year dental student, and today I am talking you through the entire process of becoming a dentist. I think dentistry is truly a fantastic profession and each of us that is blessed to be in the position that we're in has so many bright things to look forward to in the future. And I wanna help you today with going through the entire process of going high school all the way to practicing dentist, wearing the white coat, step by step. This video is going to be extremely simple, but hopefully quite informative. And what I want for you to do is figure out where in the process you are. Are you a junior in college? Are you a high school freshman? Are you a dental student? And what you're gonna do with that is you're going to find your place in this video. So what I've done is I've divided this video up into chapters within the YouTube video. So we're going all the way from high school to getting licensure and being able to practice dentistry. And what you will want to do is find this little timeline here, right here, find where you are in the process and go ahead and start watching there. Or if you wanna start from the very beginning, you could do that as well, I'm not gonna complain about that, but that will make this video a little bit easier for you to just sort of find your place in all of this. If you enjoyed this video and you wanna see more content about dentistry, the life of a dental student, and things that kind of make me tick as a dental student outside of school, make sure that you subscribe to this channel right now. And let me know if you enjoyed this video by liking it and leaving a comment below. Let's not waste any more time, let's get right into it. I'm starting off with the high schoolers, my friends who are, you're super, super early on in the process, but you've seen dentistry, whether it's someone that you know and love, or if it's just uh, on YouTube or, or on TV or somewhere, and you've decided that maybe you wanna start working your career towards dentistry. This section is going to be devoted to you, and at first I wasn't going to start this video with high school, I thought that that was probably too early, but I've actually had multiple high school students DM me on Instagram and ask me you know, a couple of things about my process of getting all the way to dental school. And that made me think maybe I should devote a portion of this video to you guys. And if you have more specific questions, you can always let me know on Instagram. I'm, I'm always there to help any young student. That's something that, that I, I take pride in doing. So just let me know. But we're gonna start out in high school. I think at this point, really the only thing that you should be concerned about is trying to decide whether or not dentistry is something that you even wanna look at. I'm gonna say this right now, and I mean it. High school is not the time when you're going to decide what you want to do with your life. When I went to college, I knew so many people who came into college wanting to do one thing and left college doing something that wasn't even on their radar. What happens when you go to college is that you take a bunch of different courses and you start to have a bunch of experiences within those courses inside and outside of school. And all of those experiences sort of come together to help you decide what you're actually going towards and ultimately give you that sense of direction as you continue on your time in college. So if you're in high school and you think that dentistry is something that you're interested in, don't say no to that. Definitely keep that in mind and allow that to be something that you look forward to and that you use as motivation going forward but don't set your mind on it completely just yet if you're in this position you should try and shadow a dentist once or twice just to try to kind of see what it's like day to day what it's like hands-on so ask your parents if they have a dentist as a friend or maybe your childhood dentist or orthodontist just try to see if you can go in and ask them to shadow and what that will allow you to do is to actually watch them work and to decide for yourself if dentistry is something that you wanna pursue in the future. And then the one big thing that I want you to do as a high school student is to try and consider choosing a college that will allow you to excel academically. There's a sort of antiquated idea out there that choosing a college that is prestigious and has a large name is going to help you get places in life. And I don't necessarily think that that applies anymore. Nowadays, you can get a great education at pretty much any college, but what matters more so than the name of the college is how you actually perform at that school. I went to a very large state school, the University of Tennessee, pretty good academically, but not something that is an Ivy League or anything like that. And I have people in my dental class that are like me that went to big state schools and other people that went to very small schools that most people haven't heard of. It doesn't really matter. What matters is how you perform. And so I would choose a college where you can see yourself performing quite well academically 
try and get as close as possible to a 4.0 college GPA and just making sure that you're going to do well in the classroom and that you're also going to enjoy yourself outside of the classroom. So my high school students, welcome to the beginning of your journey, hopefully to becoming a dentist. Don't stress over this right now. Just try to enjoy these years of being young and not having too much on your plate and make sure that you make smart decisions moving forward. College freshmen, let's get into it. So you're at college, you are new to this entire experience. The first thing that I wanna tell you on the road to becoming a dentist has absolutely nothing to do with dentistry and that is simply to enjoy your life. College is truly one of the most amazing times that hopefully we get the opportunity to go through in this life. And it's just a time when you can figure out what makes you tick. What do you enjoy about life? What do you not enjoy about life? Who are the types of people that you wanna surround yourself with? And what do you see yourself doing in the future? I want you to challenge yourself to go out and meet new people, have new experiences, remain smart, make smart decisions, but just enjoy the freedom. Enjoy living alone or with just friends and, and being able to kind of tailor each day to do what you wanna do. I know that times are strange right now with COVID, but try to just enjoy life as much as possible. As far as your coursework is concerned, this is gonna be something that you wanna sit down with your academic advisor and talk about, but most dental schools are gonna have pretty much the same prerequisite material. And that is something that I'll throw up right here on the screen. Pretty much gonna be your basic sciences. Um, your first things that you're gonna get into are general biology and chemistry. And then you're going to, at some point, go through physics, organic chemistry, biochemistry, and some of the more upper level biologies. During your freshman year, I would consider getting through both general biology one and two and general chemistry one and two. This is something that I didn't do. I kind of wish I had, because it set me back a little bit. But try and just bang out those four classes because they're gonna set you up pretty nicely to move forward quite well with your prerequisite curriculum and those are gonna be the first classes that really get you involved in all of this. It is still super early in your decision process as to what you wanna do in your life, and a lot of people actually kind of start to move in the right direction during their freshman year. So your freshman year might be the time that you decide that you wanna be a dentist or that you don't wanna be a dentist. And I encourage you, if you're trying to make this decision, to see as much of dentistry as possible. If you're watching this video, you're on the right track already, but I want to challenge you to actually go out and meet some dentists and try and shadow them to see what their day-to-day -day life is like. Shadowing dentists is extremely important. It can be a bit awkward at times, but really it allows you to get into a dental office and view dentistry from the position of the operator and practitioner as opposed to the patient who's laying in the chair and has no idea what's going on. When you shadow working dentists, you get to see what their days are like, how much do they work, how much do their assistants do, what is the work that they actually do, is it something that you see yourself doing? So in your freshman year of college, try and do a little bit of shadowing, not to get up any hours or anything, but just to see if it's something that you wanna do. And the last thing that I wanna talk about quickly here for freshmen is in your second semester, try and do like one or two service projects. Just get a little bit of service in at the very beginning of college. It'll help you as you try and build up your service hours for your eventual application. Service is always good. It's not something that we should do uh, because we have to for our application. It's something that we should do because it helps people around us. But try and do like one or two service projects late in your freshman year and you will be set to move on to sophomore year. So sophomores, what's up fellas? This is a good year because you're kind of not the newbie on campus anymore in college and you're starting to kind of move forward with all of these big decisions. Sophomore year is actually pretty much when you're gonna to wanna to decide what you are majoring in. And this is an interesting discussion. I've talked about it in videos in the past. If you've decided on dentistry as a sophomore and you're choosing what you wanna major in, I would just consider doing something that you actually enjoy and something that will allow you to get good grades. In college, I was an English major and I knew the entire time from when I started college all the way through that I wanted to be a dentist. And I didn't major in English because I wanted to pursue English. I majored in English because I enjoyed it. I wanted to become a better writer and I wanted to diversify my days a little bit so that instead of having all biology and chemistry all day, every day, I had biology and chemistry in the morning and then I had some cool English stuff in the second half of my days. And I know a lot of my current classmates in dental school who did sort of a similar thing. They picked a major that they enjoyed, a major that they saw themselves doing well in, and that's what they kind of did for their on paper major, all the while taking their dental prerequisite courses. As far as your dental prerequisites go, this is going to be the year that you maybe tie up your general chemistry and biology and get into physics, which, kind of sucks, physics is not fun, at least it wasn't for me. 
It can be interesting, but it's just generally pretty tough. But make sure that you're just following along with the path that your advisor has set out for you. Hopefully you've been able to sit down with your academic advisor and get a written plan for what each semester is going to look like to get you from the semester where you're currently at all the way through graduation and moving forward. And outside of the classroom, I want you to consider two things, and that is service and shadowing. Sophomore year is a good time to start to get your numbers up a little bit when it comes to shadowing dentists getting out there and seeing the profession, and then also doing service to build up your service hours, to see more things, to help more people, and to get out there a little bit more and to have more experiences. You never really know what's gonna happen when you shadow and do service. We do them to build up the numbers, kind of like on first glance, but what can happen in all of these experiences may end up shaping the way that you move forward into your future. Some of the things that I saw and experienced while I was doing my service is the reason why I'm sitting here today. I mean, they were the things that allowed me to make this difficult decision, have given me this implicit motivation to continue moving forward. And so just make sure that you go into these things with an open mind and open eyes, open ears, and you just try to experience everything and really just take it all in. That's it, sophomores, I'll see you junior year. So junior year, things are definitely moving fast now. At this point, you're probably all thinking, wow, I need to go ahead and decide what I wanna do with my life. Well, dentistry is a fantastic thing to do with your life. It's not about the money, it's about actually being able to help people to do something with your hands. I mean, truly building and creating things in an artistic and creative fashion is amazing. And dentistry does that and allows us to combine those things with science and knowledge of the human body and the anatomy. It's just so cool, man. And junior year is a big year of college for most pre-dental students. This is the year when you're probably going to consider taking the DAT. I'll get into that in a second. But if you're kind of behind, um, don't really worry about that. I actually went through college in four and a half years. I didn't take this route that I'm sort of laying out here in this video. I took a slightly different route. So don't really worry if you're not exactly on track, but make sure that you're trying to get through as many of your dental prerequisite courses as possible and trying to get just each step closer to graduation and to moving on. I would say in your junior year, you want to take organic chemistry, and this is going to be one of the tougher classes that you take in college. I could talk about organic for days, but for this video, I will just say, try and take organic and do it in the way that is going to give you the best opportunity to make the best grades. I was gonna shoot for A's when I went into organic and I actually ended up taking them, my organic classes in the summer and that way I could fully focus on organic and I ended up with A's, which was great. But do what you can to get good grades in organic chemistry and just try to kind of soak in all of that information because it's going to become important for the DAT. The DAT is going to be one of the biggest things that you do as a pre-dental student. It is an absolutely massive exam. It's scary, it's daunting. Um, there are plenty of people who have made a life's work out of helping students go through the DAT and a lot of them do a very good job. Most people take the DAT the summer after their junior year. Like I said, my schedule through college was completely different and kind of screwed up. So I took it a little bit later, but this is probably the time when you're going to want to consider the DAT, how you're going to get through it, what you're going to do and uh, best of luck. I use DAT Bootcamp. Pretty much everybody these days uses DAT Bootcamp. It is a fantastic resource. It is so well put together and it is so uh, expansive and covers everything you need to know. The, the practice tests are fantastic and they are plentiful. So definitely consider using that. I think unfortunately it used to be a lot cheaper than it currently is, but it's worth it and you're gonna have to go through it at some point. So go ahead and invest in that and get through it. The only other things that you should consider in your junior year are also once again, making sure that you're getting your service and your shadowing hours up. Um, the number of service and shadowing is, is sort of up for debate. I was kind of shooting for 200 of each, um, but don't do it because you want to have the hours, do it because you want the experience and just keep that in mind. And for you juniors, I'm going to give you a specific service project to look for and one that I think actually can be quite formative and that is remote area medical. The short way of saying this is a RAM clinic, R-A-M, but these are actual uh, mobile dental and medical clinics that go across the country and they go to areas that are pretty underserved in the healthcare profession. These clinics are amazing and I was actually able to assist for my first time ever at one of these clinics. I assisted a dental student who was performing extractions and it was some of the coolest experiences that I had while I was going through the entire process. I just realized my monitor turned off, hold on. 
All right, that's better. So yes, consider a RAM clinic and make sure that just in general, you're doing service that you think is important and is helping the world and the community around you. And that's pretty much it for your junior year. So what is up my seniors, the big men and women on campus? This is a fun year, senior year. You're so close to moving forward with your life. Everybody around you is picking their profession, their jobs. A lot of them are actually getting jobs, signing contracts. And you are right here on the precipice of going to dental school, which is super, super exciting. So I think the traditional route to get you through four years of college and straight into dental school is to actually have you apply for dental school through ADSAS, A-A-D-S-A-S, -S, the summer before your senior year. The application process of applying to dental school is pretty thorough. There's going to be a lot of time that you spend writing your application. It is uh, a lot of time putting together all of your experiences, all of your shadowing, all of your service, all the things that you've done in the profession, in school, the awards you've received, any sort of recognition, putting that all together and describing each step of the process and how it's built you into this person that you are today. The application is also going to entail a big personal statement, which I have a convenient video for. You can see that right here. And so all of this is going to be the process of actually applying. There are once again, plenty of videos on the specifics if you have any specific questions, but this is going to be the year when you apply for dental school, which is just so exciting. As far as coursework is concerned, senior year, you're gonna to wanna to tie up all of your dental prerequisite courses. Biochemistry is usually a pretty big course that is taken this year. Biochemistry was tough for me. I actually have a video talking about biochemistry if you want a few just like tips and pointers on how to get through that class. But this is going to be the year that you tie up all of those classes. You make sure that everything that is on your ideal dream dental school's list of prerequisites is completed. You've done it all, you've checked it all off the list, and that's going to, of course, play into how you go through the application as well. I've said this at every section in each of the college years, but make sure that you're doing your shadowing and you're doing your service, but consider even taking a deeper role in a dental office as a senior. If you're looking for a little bit of extra money or just something to do with some of your free time, consider a job in a dental office. Go around, talk to some of the dentists that you shadowed or some dentists that you're close with and see if you can work in their office cleaning instruments or just doing something dumb like that. And, and just getting a little bit more experience, definite experience in a dental office around the profession because dental schools love to see that you're dedicated to dentistry specifically and that you're not just applying to dental school because you have good grades and because you wanna go into the medical profession and be a doctor someday. I think dedication to the dental field specifically is not talked about enough. And it's something that I kind of focused on a little bit, but could have focused on more honestly. And I think nowadays students should be focusing on quite a bit. Keep in mind the timeline of dental school. Applications usually open up in early June, if I remember correctly. Acceptances start rolling in in early December, and then your dental school experience will begin in July or August of the following year. So just kind of start to keep that in mind. What I did was I actually wrote out a calendar for myself to kind of see what each landmark was gonna be. If I had all the things done that I needed to by a certain period of time, I was in good shape. And it just gave me kind of a good idea of where I was at, where I was headed. So I recommend you do the same thing. And make sure that all of this is tailored towards the schools that you want to apply to. Um, most dental schools are pretty similar, but they're not all the same. And so my experience was with my current dental school, which is the University of Tennessee Health Science Center. And um, everything was sort of tailored towards, towards this school. But whatever school that you're looking at, make sure that you're just completing all the requirements, you're doing everything on time and everything early actually and that's gonna get you set up to be in a good position. The last thing that I wanna to say to you seniors is this, make sure that you are enjoying your life. Senior year is your last chance to kind of enjoy college, enjoy that freedom, that sense of uh, you're on your own, you, you make your own decisions and your life is what you make it. I know that at senior year, a lot of you feel like, oh my gosh, I just wanna move on. I just wanna be done with this. I wanna to go to dental school. I wanna to go to the next step of my life. But truly in life, if we, if we live like that and we're constantly looking forward to what's next, what's next, we will kind of miss what's happening right now. And that can be truly tragic. So just enjoy your life. Enjoy that last little bit of freedom. Hopefully you go to a school that has a good football team. I certainly did not, but just enjoy yourself and uh, you'll, you'll be there pretty soon. So <laughs> don't dream about it too much because every step of the way is tough. 
Congratulations, you are now in dental school and you are taking massive, massive steps on the road to becoming a dentist. I'm a first year dental student, so I'm actually at this point in my life, in my career, and in this video. And I will just say to you, if you are a first year dental student, I know there's some that watch my videos, um, you're doing a lot of the same things that I'm doing. And so I think what we need to be focusing on is making sure that we get the grades that we want in our didactic courses, in our coursework, and uh, make sure that you're emphasizing your, your hand skills. Make sure that you're trying to get better at doing the actual dentistry with your hands. I know one thing I've definitely been struggling with is doing really anything up in the maxilla. Um, I, I struggle a little bit working in indirect vi with indirect vision, so I'm just trying to get better at those things. Uh, and that's what these first two years of dental school are about. If you're not a dental student and you're interested in what it's like, the first two years of dental school are gonna be your didactic section of dental school. It's gonna be when you're taking your core science courses and then your core dentistry courses, just sort of learning all of the science that you need to know to become a doctor and then learning all of the basic dentistry that you need to, to know to become a dentist. In your third and fourth years of dental school, you're going to have your clinical practice and your clinical skills are gonna take a huge jump. You're gonna go from sitting in a lecture hall every day to actually going into a dental clinic and working on real life patients. This is really cool. And it's something I look forward to greatly getting into my third year, um, actually having patients to interact with, learning what it's like to work on other human beings, not just on a plastic uh, a plastic teeth in a fake fake mannequin, fake mouth. Um, really learning what it's like to, to impact lives every day. And I know that there are gonna be plenty of challenges. I know that this is gonna be uh, quite, quite the experience. But if you're interested in seeing me go through that, make sure that you subscribe. I will be documenting all of it. And that's what's gonna happen in this third and fourth years. In order to practice as a dentist, you need to be licensed to do so. And the main way that we get licensed to practice in dentistry is by taking a very large exam called the INDBE. And this is a huge, huge exam that gives us uh, material from all of our didactic courses that we took in their first you know, three years of dental school, three, four years, and then also testing us on our clinical knowledge of dentistry. And that's going to be knowledge that we've gained both in the clinic and also in the classroom. So the INDBE is going to be a really huge exam that I take, and I look forward to talking about that in videos, kind of showing you how I study for it, how I get through that process. And that is a recent addition. It used to be two parts. You used to take one of them after your second year, and then the other one after your third or fourth year. Nowadays, it's one exam. And so we, we get all of that, all of those questions, all of that material on one exam. So make sure that throughout your experiences in dental school, you're keeping track of all your notes, all of your material, so that when it comes all back up again, you have quick access to it. And then licensure is going to depend on your state, but you're also going to have clinical uh, licensure exams where you're actually sitting down and performing dentistry on both mannequins and live patients in front of, of people who are judging you essentially. And those are gonna be uh, your other subset of exams to get you your dental license. So at this point, oh my gosh, you have graduated dental school. <laughs> You're way ahead of me, first off, uh, congratulations. But just essentially for reference, what's gonna happen at this point, you're going to get those licensures and you have to decide you know, what you wanna do. Uh, do you wanna move forward in the profession and begin practicing dentistry or do you want to continue on with your education and, and get more educated and, and try to place yourself in a smaller subset of the field? One that's really common these days is to do an AEGD, which is Advanced Education in General Dentistry. And that is just a one year specialty program that's gonna give you some more like solid experience and mentorship and just sort of like knowledge in, in the clinical aspect of dentistry. And that is something that a lot of people are now doing after their dental school experience because there's a lot to learn in four years in dental school and we are not gonna get all of it. So that extra time that you spend learning is probably gonna serve you quite well as you move forward into practice. And that's really it, folks. I mean, at this point in the video, you are a white coat wearing dentist. So I've kind of done my job, right? But now you actually have to go out and do all of the work. Uh, like I said, I'm sort of in the middle of it there in my first year of dental school, trying to just get through each day here at this desk, study what I have to study, learn the things that I have to learn, and, and just try to get one step closer each day to becoming a dentist. And I hope that you are doing the same thing with me. This video is super long and I apologize for the length of it, but I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you learned a few things. And if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. I, I answer all of my comments and, and I, I love to see that you folks are, are engaged in my videos and that you're asking questions and, and making comments. 
but you can also find me on Instagram. If you have specific comments and things that you want to, to know, some specific questions, you can always hit me up on Instagram. I'm usually kind of slow to respond to my Instagram DMs, but I try to do so. But I just appreciate each of you for watching this video. I hope that you are decided on dentistry and you're joining me in this wonderful profession. And this is what you wanna make your life's work because it's just truly great. And, and I love the dental community. I love the people that I've met within the dental community. And I hope that all of you join me within dentistry. Guys, stay tuned for everything coming in the future. Thank you as always for watching this video and I will see you soon. That's been it for me. I'll see you next time.